Unfamiliar alien air, also alien people, and here in this completely alien to the heroine together, appeared a man who extended his hand to her. When the girl recalls that very moment, then, perhaps, even then, everything was predetermined for her. One day, the heroine stood on the platform waiting for her train, and she was approached by a girl who approached her. At first, the heroine was a little wary, and then noticed that it was Mi Hyun. The interlocutor stated that the girl probably didn't expect to run into each other at the station and asked if she was ready. The heroine added that it was all for naught, as she literally didn't sleep at all for a whole night. And the friend stated that it really wasn't aha. She's probably all worked up about the test. The girl agreed with this, but the friend shouted that she should raise her nose higher because she is smart and there will be no problems. Soon, the announcer announced that the train was arriving at the station, and honored passengers were kindly requested not to enter the yellow line. The heroine looked at that very train and realized that it was blinding her eyes very badly. At this point, she started to plop down, and her friend noticed all of this. She begged that you girl did not jump down there, but it was too late. Shortly after this event, when the heroine had already reopened her eyes again, she was in a completely unfamiliar place. She had gotten up to see the atmosphere around her and was on some green lawn. But this whole atmosphere was actually quite unlike her, for she did not realize if she was really in a forest. Although it is really impossible, because in the morning she was definitely waiting for the train to go to take a passing exam in college. The heroine remembers only that she got dizzy, and because of this, she lost consciousness. But when she woke up, she was already here in an unfamiliar place. Then she got up and thought that it seemed to be just a dream, because it could not be real. After that, she started to make her way through the rough terrain and thought that it was strange, because if it was her dream, then why she was so tired on the way? Did dreams were always so realistic, and at that moment she had a very dry throat and her stomach was empty? The heroine realized that if it was real, it was time to wake up. Suddenly, something flew overhead, and the girl then sat down and thought, what is it really not a dream? At that moment, she was very much alert and heard, as it seemed to her, that literally someone was screaming. But it was unclear why she could not make out what was going on. Now she felt only very strong fatigue, and whether it is a dream or reality, everything will end here. Therefore, the heroine from powerlessness soon simply fell to the ground. But the noise near her did not stop. After a while, the girl woke up again and looked around. She realized that she did not understand where she found herself again. In addition, for some reason she had a pretty bad headache. All around, you reality was pretty much like that this dream is realistic, and how she got lost in some forest is incomprehensible. Right after that, she opened the window and saw that very forest. So in her mind she thought that it was not just a dream. And so after these events, a whole year has passed, and from the time when the heroine got the first time in this place, now she was on the sill of one of the open windows and was breathing rather heavily. The protagonist was very worried and realized that today was her last chance to escape from this place. Looking down, she was worried and still tuned herself that everything was fine and she would be able to do it. After that, she did jump down to say goodbye to her life, but she was grabbed by a woman at the last moment, she tried to hold the heroine down and thought that my lady was really weird. The heroine looked at her and thought that this was all really bad, because she was caught again. As it was before, the girl tried to end her life several times, but she never succeeded. Here one day, she was sitting with this woman in a carriage that was heading to an unknown destination. While doing so, she was biting her nails for some reason, but that was not a good sign of aristocracy. So the lady who sat opposite her was reading a book and asked her to behave appropriately. After all, after all, she is a member of the Bonapit family. After that, the girl stopped doing so and looked at her interlocutor. But the woman also stopped reading the book and said that she, who does not even have a lineage of ingrates, to His Excellency, Duke Elu. After all, it was this man who had rescued her from the most dangerous forest and had shown her mercy for a whole year. If she really behaves like this at court, she will put His Excellency to shame. The heroine realized that His Excellency and Duke Ale, or rather the entire House of Bonapi, had all been her saviors until very recently. But here now, they are demons who wish to give her to the Emperor instead of the Duke's dear daughter. 
So the girl got angry and tore the thing she held in her hands. The woman noticed this and asked my lady if she could wait a second. Next she came closer and was horrified, for it was an expensive dress. Still, she initially didn't want to trust someone like her, for even touching the sleeve of this dress was already a big accomplishment for her. The heroine got angry because of her words, and immediately slapped her face with her hand. The woman didn't expect such a thing, and from the missed blow, she immediately fell backwards on the seat. Next she looked at the girl and asked her what she was all about. Here the heroine declared for her to stop saying that. The interlocutor remarked that they did not understand what she was talking about, and let her tell her. And then the heroine went on to say, what mercy and what gratitude can even be talked about now? After all, literally all of them were controlling her as if she were some kind of puppet to be turned in as a concubine to an old, perverted, horse-like man instead of Lisbeth. But what a shame, because she can't appear before the emperor like that. But good for them. The lady asked in what sense it was a fate, and the girl said that it did not matter. At the same time, she immediately thought that something she felt, and her tongue suddenly began to braid very strongly. The woman afterwards wondered with surprise how she dared, for she must realize how much they had done for her, even though she was not of noble birth. To all this, what a great honor to be chosen to be the concubine of the emperor himself. The heroine stated, since this is such a great honor, then let them send Elizabeth to her. The interlocutor remarked that the little lady was only 14 years old, and she was still so young. The girl declared that she was such a thing, saying, she had heard that in this country they marry at 12 years of age. It came out that all this time, he nor quietly chewed to himself. But it was at this very turn that he felt the pressure, for something must be done. And the woman did not know what to answer, and the heroine went on to say that the heiresses of an aristocratic family let them not make her laugh. She realized that these conversations were making her sick, and so she asked if it was true that she was just a slave and nothing more. Not only was it hard on her, but she had been shaking continuously in this carriage for a whole week. Soon the girl felt a gag reflex and covered her mouth with her hand. The woman noticed it too and shouted that you she didn't dare vomit here. After all, the silk that is kept in this carriage, then there is no way to launder. But the heroine smiled and thought she was grateful for Orlin's advice. Finally, after some time, the carriage together with the main heroine, as well as her companion, arrived at the royal palace of the Empire of Crentia. They were just about to be at one of the events. The servant of His Majesty the Emperor was reading out the list of games, saying that the first princess of the Duchy of Ale and the fifteenth concubine of His Majesty the Emperor had been brought. This girl's name is Sabine, de Bon P. The girl poured a beautiful dress and stood with her companion Orlin, the girl stood with a completely displeased face, and so the interlocutor asked if she realized that she was asking her to stop, behaving inappropriately. If she would be so reckless with his majesty, she would not see the question with her head. And the protagonist realized that in such a case and the Hertza himself will be punished, but it's not even bad, because she does not want to die yet. Still, although, except for her studies, she knew nothing about this life, but to die because of such a thing is quite another matter. People from the crowd who were at the event and looked at the girl and said how gorgeous and black her hair was. Some of them stayed and asked if this daughter of His Excellency was true. And because of this, they said that there were rumors that she was born, out of wedlock. And the interlocutor stated that she had heard from the distant kinship of this man. The man said that she should wait a little while, for her age was rather young, and His Majesty probably wished for someone younger. Who besides? She had such an unusual skin tone. The girl bowed to the emperor and noticed that she was Sabine de Bonpi. It turns out that she has been honored to meet the world's only lord of Kurgadnia, Orlin and Norsantos, and the emperor of Krysia. She is extremely excited to be part of becoming one of his majesty's concubines. While looking at his shoes, she thought that this moment had come. But what about his shoes? Soon the emperor ordered that she raise her head. The girl reluctantly did so, and then the man declared that wasn't she pretty quite unusually, and not at all bad in fact. Sabina realized that no matter how much she was told that he was an old man and also looked like a pig, somewhere deep in her heart she denied it, and yet hoped for the best. But here the reality turned out to be indeed not so sweet. Now the girl did not understand whether she really will become the wife of this strenuous pervert. 
The old man, looking at the young girl, let tears, and she thought that she finally realized the reality. She had really been made a concubine of the old pervert who was older than her own grandfather. Out of desperation, and this hamstrung, the heroine crouched right on the floor afterward. The companion who had brought her here was horrified and said that it was very rude in His Majesty's presence. Zrenya realized that she didn't have the strength to stand, but would have to get up as soon as possible. And at that moment, when she was about to do so, some man stretched out his hand to her and remarked that she seemed to be tired from the tiresome journey, so he asks her to give him her hand. The protagonist looked at this man with great surprise and saw that he has shining golden hair as well as green eyes. It turns out that he is handsome, and even that is not true, for he is matchlessly handsome. Sabina held out her hand to him and thanked him for it, and thought that if it had been him instead of the emperor, it would have been very beautiful. The man noticed that politeness was not so important anymore, because today he became part of his father's harem, and it came out quite naturally. The heroine was dumbfounded because of from the words about his father, so she thought, is he really the son of the emperor? All this means that he is the only son of the emperor and the heir to the throne, and his name is also Lucrentius Lucrentia, His Excellency. The emperor rose from his seat and remarked to the girl that he would introduce her to the rest of the harem. Afterward, pointing with his hand into the crowd, he remarked that this was Empress Catolia. The girl looked at her and thought that she was a rather young and beautiful woman. In addition, her belly is quite large, and so perhaps she is pregnant. Next, the heroine came closer to do something. She bowed to the woman and remarked that she was glad to meet Her Majesty, and the Empress turned the other way and declared that she was too. At the same time, the heroine realized because of this that she did not seem to be interested in her at all. The old man further continued the performance and said that these are two princesses, Lilianai and Rosalia, but they are not the Empress's daughters, and here are the queens with a harem. The way out of this situation is that there is an empress and four queens in the female half of the palace. In addition, there are 14 other concubines along with her, and she is the last 15th concubine. To put it another way, not counting the emperor himself and his son, she has to serve 19 people. Therefore, her mind was wondering if she would even survive here. Soon the old man grabbed the heroine and noticed that the ceremony was over and she was now his concubine. The girl tried to break free, and the old man said that as the suit had told him Duke Ale, she had uniquely soft skin, and he liked it. Afterward, he licked her and noticed how she tasted. She is, after all, still a girl, and sheepishly impresses him a lot and shows male involvement. In the shower, the heroine was screaming because of this, and it was horrible. The old man said that today he would probably have as much fun as he hadn't had in a long time. And so that very afternoon, the protagonist was prepared to spend the night with the emperor. With horror, the girl showed up at his place and the man was lying almost naked on the bed. To make matters worse, he told her she was late. And afterward, with excited eyes, he rose and remarked that it was beautiful, for even in her nightgown she was so pure and innocent. The girl tried to say something to his majesty, but the old man grabbed her from behind. The heroine tried to address his majesty, but he would not listen to her. So she thought what to do, almost need to find some way out of this situation. So she shouted out to His Excellency that she had a talk to him. The old man declared that he agreed to everything, and in bed he would listen to her as much as he wanted. And immediately after that, the emperor threw the girl on the bed and she screamed because of that. Next, and the man himself climbed on top of her. Soon he touched her face with his finger and noticed that he thought that she was obedient, but it seems that they have a wild horse here. That said, she should realize that a thoroughbred horse needs a good rider. The old pervert started undressing the girl little by little and said that today he would find out if she was good like this. He further marveled and said that it was beautiful, for her skin was quite like gold. His Excellency, the Emperor then licked his lips and remarked that he wondered what she was like to the touch. The girl realized what followed ahead and tearfully cried out for him not to do so. She then closed her eyes expecting the unmentionable to happen, but nothing happened and she opened them. The picture that unfolded before her dumbfounded her, for she saw blood in the emperor's chest. Also, at that moment, a blade was thrust into him from behind, and the heroine thought that he was dead. 
Next, she turned her attention to the side to see who had done it. He reality. There she saw some guy who was wearing a mask and hiding his face so that no one would recognize him. After the heroine wanted to make some sound, realizing that it was a hired killer. But the same stranger immediately covered her mouth and told her to be quiet, because he realized that he could talk a lot. The guy remarked that if she did not want to die, then let her be quiet, and if she makes noise, she will say goodbye to her life at once. Naturally, the heroine did not want to die at all, so she nodded her head, saying that she would obey him. The stranger then exhaled deeply and pulled out his blade. The dazed girl padded over to stare at him, not realizing what was going on. At the same time, it was clear that the situation was critical and she needed to do something. Still, in such a situation he could attempt on her life as well and stab her, so one should think. It was unclear how to get out of a difficult situation this time, although she definitely needs to survive. The protagonist's body began to shake, and she wanted to make some sounds talking about herself. Soon after, through force, she squeezed out words saying that she could help him. The mysterious stranger looked at her in surprise and asked what she meant. And the girl was selling the talk and remarked that she could testify and say something that he was innocent. The murderer looked at her and stated that he could just kill her and no one, much less catch him. And the heroine added that the royal guards are the best in the whole country and would he get away with it so easily. If he extends his hand to her now, he will be able to sit still until he is acquitted. It would be possible to say that the criminal, for example, is a swarthy man with a scar over his right eye. In this, the heroine thought as to him, is it a good suggestion? The interlocutor added that the first impression is completely wrong, but he was able to bypass this top guard and sneak into the imperial chambers. Besides, he didn't have far to run here at all. In other words, he did not need her testimony in this situation. Sabina was surprised and felt dizzy and could do nothing else. She then stated to this stranger that she had just one request. The man asked what the request was, and the heroine stated that she would not cling to life, so would make it so that she would die quickly and not suffer. So asked if she could ask at least such a favor of him. But the interlocutor after hearing this began to laugh very hard, and it was quite loud. Sabina looked at him and thought that he was laughing. What was so funny here? Soon the man stopped laughing and exhaled deeply, and then stated that she was wrong about something, but entirely her guesses were correct. He further stated that he wanted to ask her for something. The girl was a wag from this, but asked what she should do. The assassin continued to wash his face and stated that she seemed to be at least asked to lick her feet now, and she would do it. The heroine stated that if he asked for something, she would do it and thought in her head that she would do anything to save her life in the process. And the interlocutor added that this request was completely reckless. Further noticed that as soon as he leaves this room, then she put down immediately runs out. The girl wanted to say something, but the interlocutor stated with you, she did not interrupt him. And he went on to say that he would not leave through the door or through the window. So this girl runs out into the street and screams that the emperor has been killed, and then starts hysterical and faints. The girl wondered, and if this was going to save his life. Though she didn't understand what any of this could mean. Does he really want to let them find the crime scene faster? That said, at this point, wouldn't it be best for them to discover it as late as possible? Next, they introduce the added that this will be the extent of her work. Besides, he asked her to mention that she had seen, say, a certain black shadow jump out of the window afterward. The girl thought that she would say it a hundred times, as long as she did not die in the process. The interlocutor said that if she helped him with this, he would not only keep her alive, but also reward her. The heroine thought in what sense he would reward her, and the interlocutor turned in the other direction. At the same time, he went to the wall and pushed one of the bricks away from it, revealing a secret passage. At last, the murderer turned to the girl and noticed that she did not let him down while calling her an accomplice. The heroine noticed that she understood everything and thought that somewhere she had already seen this man. Going over various thoughts in her head, the girl realized that these green eyes has only the heirs to the imperial crown, and this person is Lucretius Lucrentia. Except that the heroine wanted to say that he is this man and said a few letters of his name. But immediately afterward recovered, for she saw his main look. For she realized that if what she had noticed was revealed, it would go away rather horribly. 
The prince then looked at her and noticed that she was smart, for he realized that she understood everything. Next, some rustling was heard, and the man declared that her time had come. And so the girl began to run away. On the way, she realized that she had to do as she was told, so even though she didn't know anyone here, she would run away as fast as possible. Still really should run away until that crazy imperial heir comes. Perhaps she should wait a bit, and then he will completely forget her and won't kill her because of this situation. When the heroine ran out into the hall, she started screaming really hard and attracting attention, talking about getting help. Next, she fell to her knees in despair and said that His Excellency was killed. And at that moment, she thought that this was probably the end of her performance, but she couldn't die like that. And so last night, His Excellency the Emperor was assassinated. The witness to this crime happened to be the 15th concubine, who was then supposed to share the first night with the Emperor. It was she who, after reporting the incident, immediately fainted. The girl, of course, had heard these conversations and realized that it was definitely about her now. If to speak in reality, then for her it was really all just part of the game. By the way, she knows the king's assassin very well. If you look at the man who is right now in front of her in the hall, he is the prince. Although his robes are different, his sharp eyes are still the same as they were yesterday. This is the man who brutally murdered her father before her eyes, and he is her accomplice. The protagonist bowed before them and remarked that she was glad to meet His Majesty the Prince. At this moment, the Empress got angry and noticed that some eyes of hers were rather blank. The girl realized that she had made a mistake. After all, she should have greeted the Empress first, and to make such a dumb mistake is bad. Soon, she decided that it was necessary to leave and declared that she apologized to Her Majesty the Empress, and with her permission, she would deviate. She further stated that it was possible to do without obstacles. Suddenly, another girl came up and remarked that Mrs. Sabina had not forgotten the shock of yesterday and that she still seemed to be in a state of confusion. The Empress exhaled sadly and then stated that the priestess was indeed quite gracious. This girl she was talking to was a priestess and the daughter of a god. She was the only one in this world who could hear his voice. The heroine spent here only about a water carrier know about her, because this priestess is very famous. People say that it was she who exerted untold influence on the emperor himself. One of the priests joined the conversation, and remarked that no one but she could have called Miss Sabina here today. Still, the priestess wished to know about yesterday's incident. Suddenly, the Empress remarked that they were obliged not only to punish the murderer, but also to reveal all the secrets and destroy the evil. Hearing these words, the prince smiled and then said that she was absolutely right, already with a rather serious face. In addition, he said that he should also heal the grief of the deceased former emperor. The woman asked in surprise which former emperor he had said that about. Still, though His Excellency's body was still intact, but he calls him that. That means that she will soon be called Empress Dowager. The priest asked to be allowed to say, Her Majesty the Empress Dowager, Still, since His Majesty the Emperor was paying, doesn't it go without saying that she is rising Empress Dowager? After that, he turned his attention to the Prince and asked if he understood correctly and called him Imperial Highness. From these words of this man, all the girls who were around were surprised. To all this, the heroine was also surprised, for she realized that now everything would turn upside down. And so Lucrentius declared that although he was young, he would still do everything in his power. All the other subjects realized what had happened, and so most of them began to bow down to His Majesty the Emperor. But here was the Empress, who didn't like all this at all. So she angrily asked if this meant that he was the Emperor, and if he himself was not the son of one horrible, lecherous woman. His Majesty the Emperor had long ago doubted whether he was his child. The protagonist because of this was surprised and wondered whether it was all true. That's how it turns out, because in appearance he is not with the emperor, like heaven and earth, and that man, the former emperor in general, some bore. Suddenly, a priestess joined the conversation and remarked to his majesty whether he had seen the portrait of the late emperor's father. Still, she is blind and therefore cannot look, but all those who have seen it in return claim something interesting. It turns out that the dead Emperor Kentius, as well as His Majesty Emperor Lucrentius, resemble each other like two drops of water. 
The Empress clutched her head and didn't know what to answer. Then she began to ponder what to do, and so she looked angrily at the protagonist and said that they should take her to the dungeon now because she was not involved in the murder of the Emperor. The heroine was dumbfounded and wondered what this was all about. Suddenly, she had turned all the arrows exactly on her. Although if you think about it well, she is the one who is really the accomplice after all, and that's just the way it is. Next, she looked at the former prince and saw the smile on his face, so she thought what was wrong with him in the first place. It turns out that he had called her his accomplice shortly before, and now he was probably going to ditch her. It was all of this that made her angry, and the girl thought that it was just useless to expect anything from him. And besides, she has no opportunity, so you need to think of something quick. In the end, the protagonist did not think of anything better than to simply fall on the floor and scream that she was not involved in the murder. She also had tears flowing in streams, and she noticed that she only saw the face of the criminal with her own eyes. In addition, she thought that it was simply the most horrible villain. The Empress was dumbfounded by what she heard and asked if she could really see the suicide. Then the heroine looked at Lucrentius and thought that he should help her, otherwise she would tell everything. Still, she hated the pain itself very much, and she also didn't like to keep things dark at all. If they arrested her and started torturing her, she would give everything away on the very first day. The girl was angry that he didn't answer for a long time, and she thought to herself to make him come up with something quicker. Soon, the new emperor asked if he would let him ask. It turns out that he is the only one and must avenge his father of the previous emperor. As a result, if she helps him to do so, he will be grateful for her assistance, and as a result, he promises a decent compensation. After saying that, the heroine remembered that he had said the same thing just yesterday, that he might even reward her for her help. If we are talking about yesterday's gift, as well as today's raid, the girl thinks that he is not lying. The Empress stepped closer to her and noticed her talking about what the assassin looked like. Plus, it was curious if he had mentioned who was behind it. Looking at her interlocutor, the girl thought that at first it seemed like she wanted to kill her, but now she was being kind like this. Besides, she absolutely can't trust this man completely. In the end, she only has to choose one side of someone else. The woman kept saying to tell her who it was, and the heroine was tormented by the thoughts of whether she should choose the empress or the emperor as her widow. Soon, the girl began to tell that when she entered, his majesty was already cloths, and then she noticed a man in a servant's form jumping out of the window. He had a rather thin face and also a mole extending down his cheek, exactly the kind the artist had depicted. She realized that the royal artist was really quite amazing, because just from the description alone, he had perfectly portrayed her teacher's face, though she was already apologizing for making her teacher the culprit. Lucrentius was also there, and noticed how amazing her memory was after all. The heroine thought that he really did go overboard with the sarcasm at that moment, further stated that she was flattered by his majesty, and he must have been looking out for her. She soon decided that she had kept her part of the promise, and now it was his turn to do so. The man stated that he was really glad she was all right, and thanks to her, he didn't know what a real assassin looked like. After that, he bent down in front of the girl and kissed her hand. Further remarked that he was grateful, if it wasn't for her courage, they wouldn't have been able to avenge His Excellency, the former emperor. The heroine was embarrassed and remarked that he was saying such a thing, after all, she had done almost nothing. At that, she immediately thought about the fact that it had just happened because they didn't even have goosebumps running down their backs. Probably he made a mistake by choosing this man's side. After all, this man really did kill his own father just recently, and he hides his real insensitive character under a mask of politeness. Besides, she is his accomplice. Suddenly, Lucrentius rose and informed the minister that today, Sabine de Bonifi, Duchess of Ale, would be the first empress. The people present in the room were astonished at this. The protagonist was also very much taken aback by this and thought that he had just said what other empress she was. The people present whispered about it and said how could she be an empress? The previous woman who held the title was also dumbfounded and remarked that the previous emperor's blood had not yet cooled and he was already recognizing his concubine as an empress. All of this is actually very irresponsible. Next, she realized that he never gives it a second thought, 
but still that is not the reason. Next, pointing her hand at the girl, the woman stated that in addition to becoming such a worthless concubine empress is just outrageous. The heroine realized that she thought so too, but why was this woman pointing her finger at her? The minister entered the conversation and remarked that he didn't want to seem disrespectful in front of Her Highness and the fertilizing empress, but that was definitely not the case. The woman asked the minister what he had just said and what he had called her. But the interlocutor went on to say that her husband had been killed before she entered the room, in which case her marriage had not been officially registered. The woman stated that even if it was, the law would not allow him to marry his own father's woman. After that, the priestess herself joined the conversation, and she noticed that Her Highness did not understand everything quite like that. According to the law, the concubine is not yet married. She knows that the former empress is worried that people will judge the emperor for having feelings for the previous emperor's woman. The widowed empress remarked that all of this is exactly why she is talking. And her interlocutor told her not to worry, because when one family member is unable to maintain the bonds of marriage between families, it is not surprising that another family member will replace him. And so, if she declared that the marriage had been blessed by the temple itself, then there would be no risk to the emperor in doing so. The minister smiled and clapped his hands because of this, saying that it was an excellent plan. The protagonist looked at all these people and thought that they were all against the former empress. The minister further stated that he understood so, the matter was already settled. But Sabina mentally begged them to wait, because it was not the time to just stand and watch. Still, it was quite unclear why she was being spoken of as if she was already married to the emperor and not just ignored. The widowed empress remarked that it was a huge relief that the saint would bless this marriage. But nevertheless, there is still one aspect, for shouldn't they ask the concubine herself what she thinks about it? The girl was surprised at what the woman had just said, and in doing so heard a whisper from outside herself. The interlocutor soon turned to Sabine de Bonfi and asked her what she would say and what her decision was. Now, everyone present was wondering whether she agreed or not, and should be quick to say so. The protagonist felt in the woman's gaze that if she agreed to marry and become empress, she would personally finish her off. At that moment, she was scared. It was as if she was suffocating, going underwater, and couldn't utter anything. So because of this, she mentally begged for someone to help her in this situation. And so she felt the new emperor walk up to her and touch her waist with his hand. The girl turned her attention to him. And he said with a smile on his face that in this case he apologizes, because he really forgot about the rules. The heroine asked in what sense he was speaking. And the man turned the other way and remarked that he should have consulted her before doing so. At this point, it comes out that he is indeed very grateful to her and also admires her courage in doing so. Besides, as far as the murderer was concerned, would she become his lover? The girl was dumbfounded by this. To all this, she realized that the man was saying quite polite as well as romantic words to her. But it is not clear then why her mind is filled with fear as well as anxiety. However, despite everything, and she still has to choose, and she must go against one of them. The former empress continued to press her, and with a sly smile on her face asked her what she would say in the end after all. Sabina realized at that moment that she was standing on the edge of a cliff. In the end, she had no other choice but to enter into this confrontation. After that, she bowed to His Majesty the new emperor and noticed that she was accepting his offer. Still through this action of hers, the roles become more understandable to her. Of course, the heroine doesn't understand if he can call the emperor her ally, but now she knows exactly who her enemy is. First Empress in the Empire of Friction is a unique title. As the lawful wife, she can rule the empire on par with the emperor himself. And if the empress has the same power as the emperor she needs a trusted assistant, that is the role of the first queen. If the empress herself is away or ill, the first queen replaces her as the mother of the empire. Of course, not always the first queen is an ally of that empress. For example, the dowager empress Catelia was the first queen. It was she who spread rumors of treason against the Empress in order to kill her. And so, the girl's situation is explained by her immoral husband Lucretius, whose only dignity is his beautiful face, and simply put, the First Queen is a rather important title. The girl asked her new husband why he appointed her queen. 
The man smiled and remarked that it was just because, and the heroine asked if he was some kind of crazy person. But after all, she asks why he did all this. Because of the shouting, the interlocutor immediately put the glass he held in his hands on the table. The girl became wary because of this, and the emperor loomed right over her. Of course, the girl was well aware that he had just killed his father with his own hand, and she was not sure that he would not do something similar to her. Sabina didn't know what to say to him, and at the same time, she thought if he was some kind of crazy person. But the man that moment sweetly smiled at her, and the girl was even embarrassed by it. After all, she realized that if you look at him well, he is really very handsome. So she closed her eyes in front of him and noticed that he would not deceive her with his charming smile. Because of the words she heard, he just started laughing quite hard. And the girl didn't understand why that was so and thought maybe she said something wrong and was still embarrassed. Though in the end, he thought the whole thing was funny. Laughing and wiping her tears from laughing, the emperor stated that she kept surprising her with her words. The girl realized that after all, he did find all those words of hers funny after all. He soon turned around and grabbed his glass from the table, noting that perhaps she would thank him before asking questions like this. Besides, it turns out he had protected her from the Empress Dowager, and she had married a handsome man like him. The heroine asked if this was his said reward, and the interlocutor remarked that it was. Afterwards, the girl snatched the glass that the man held in his hand and began to drink it. Then she went to the table and set it down. To all this, she cried out that if he really wanted to reward her, he would have asked first what she wanted. After all, it was completely incomprehensible to her who even said that she wanted such a grape. The emperor's face at that moment was concerned and somehow strange. As a result of this situation, the heroine realized that she had never seen him so upset, and it was pleasant. Next, Sabine asked if she understood correctly that he had never had a normal relationship. Lucrentius asked what else it was and what kind of relationship we were talking about, and the girl went on to say that he should realize that a man as intemperate and rude as him would have been bullied in high school. The man did not understand what high school and what kind of bullying we are talking about. The heroine remarked to make sure he didn't imitate her with such a horrible accent. And as she continued to sip the drink from her glass, she noticed that it was indeed excellent. The emperor snatched the glass from her and noticed that she had enough to drink. And the girl was very angry, and she immediately grabbed him, saying that he should give her back her glass. The guy kept saying that he told her to stop it. Of course that didn't stop the girl and she bit her tax lover on the arm. He was dumbfounded at what was happening and the girl squealed that it was her glass. Suddenly, the protagonist felt some gagging, and the guy noticed all this too. He asked her to wait for a second, but it was too late, because the reflex overcame her. After a while, Sabina sat in a depressed state and thought that she was crazy or insane. It turns out that she must have been crazy to have thrown up on His Majesty's clothes and, moreover, to have kicked him while he slept. The shame of your actions made her beg for someone to kill her. Now they were sitting at the table, and the girl stated that, at any rate, he never answered her why he made her the first queen. So because of that, she politely asked that he explain everything in detail. The interlocutor stated that he had talked about it before, and it was a spontaneous decision. The heroine was dumbfounded and remarked that it was also stupid, and he must be holding her for a fool. It turns out that killing the previous emperor and letting her live is all part of his plan. The original plan was for her body to be found next to the Emperor's body, and he would hide through a secret passage and provide an alibi. In the end, his current alibi is much more secure than the planned alibi. It is unclear, then, what the point of making her the first queen is in the quality of the reward. The man stated that the uniform the assassin supposedly wore had been discovered this morning, and it was outside the palace walls. The girl realized that he had already prepared the evidence and was therefore a rather cautious man. And the interlocutor went on to say that it was all because of her testimony. It was just that he rewarded her for her deed and was also impressed by her bravery. After all, she has publicly said what she thought was right. In doing so, he speaks the truth that she is amazingly smart for him when it comes to her well-being. The heroine asked in that case if he was going to kill her. The man looked at her rather slyly and remarked that he assumed he was, but she should stop mentioning the events of that night. 
If she did remind him often that she was the only one he would not hold back and silence her forever. The heroine asked if all this was a warning, and the man rose and remarked that it was not. It was only advice. At that, he stroked her head rather gently and gave her a dumbfounded look. Further, curving out rather nicely, he stated that now she wanted him to ask her, but what she really wanted. The heroine hesitated for a few moments and hesitated, then stated that she wanted to leave this palace. She added that she doesn't want the last name Bonifit or anything like that, she just wants to live a normal life, and so she asks if he will help her. The man remarked that this was rather unexpected, though he had anticipated similar ones. After all, she is not related by blood to the Duke, and apparently he just picked her up and sold her here, further inquired if she had anywhere at all to go after that. The heroine realized that she certainly had a purpose, but whether she could find her way home was unclear. In addition, what remains unclear is that if she tells him and does not know whether he will believe her, but she must continue to try and ask for help. The girl noticed that His Excellency would promise her one thing. The man asked what kind, and the heroine remarked that she wanted him not to think her crazy after what he would hear from her now. The interlocutor looked at her expectantly, and the girl remarked that she was from another world. Lucrentius then looked at her with surprise, and the girl waited to see what he would say. He stated that the girl did not look like some raving lunatic at all. The heroine stated to the state so, and the interlocutor asked then perhaps she was crazy, but not violent. Sabina realized that he didn't believe her at all. That was exactly the reason why she had asked him to believe her before. She exhaled sadly next, and noticed that she could see his promise wasn't serious at all. The man looked at her and remarked that she was right. The heroine asked what he was saying and didn't understand why he admitted it, it was so easy. And the emperor stated that he had agreed to her terms, but still hadn't kept his promise. Although he had intended to honor her request in doing so, however, even so, making every effort, he realizes that her story sounds ridiculous, and it is quite hard to believe. The girl remarked that perhaps it is, and the interlocutor went on to say that however it is, he believes that she is not lying to him. Still, come to think of it, she wouldn't benefit from this absurd story, so that means she was tricked by someone. Well, or still, like he said before, she's just not violent, but unhinged. The girl was angry about this and thought maybe he was messing with her, so she shouted out that she was not unhinged and with anger, and the interlocutor lowered his gaze and remarked that, let's say she was. Sabina understood that it was rather hard for a man to become so hateful in two days, but here he managed it. Next, the emperor stated that he could still pretend to believe her. In doing so, he says that they should just drop the subject, and that's it. Assuming she really is from another world, does he really want to go back there after living in the palace? The heroine remarked that of course he would, and asked if, if he were in her shoes, he wouldn't want to. Lucrentius added that so be it, but he didn't understand. It was nothing he killed his father anyway. Besides, if you judge correctly, he never had things like friends in his life. The girl was alarmed by this and wondered if he really didn't have any friends. If that was the case, it was incomprehensible how he could even live like that. She was sure that this was the reason for his terrible and spoiled character. Therefore, she noticed that Vaughn did not worry, because he still has everything ahead of him. And the heroine is sure that he sooner or later the same behavior of at least one friend. After all, unequivocally succeeds in this world more than her, and she was so lonely in another world. After that, the girl looked at some stern look and thought whether she had overdone it. The man on the other hand stated that there was enough talking already. The girl agreed and thought that was right, for she should know when to stop. Soon, the emperor declared that, first of all, he could not give his consent for her to leave the palace. Still, since the clergy had blessed this wedding, she was officially his queen. The girl was shocked and asked why that was so. I mean, he could fake her death, plant evidence or something. After all, he does have but a large enough amount of power and opportunity to do so. And suddenly, the interlocutor was wondering why it was he who should go so far for her. The girl was 100% sure that this man was definitely a miser. It was impossible to understand how an emperor could even be as miserly as he was. All that the girl is just a little bit of his subdivision before, and he's chatting with her like this. After a moment, the girl turned to his excellency, 
but it was as if he ignored her and just had a cup of tea. Then, the girl was a little embarrassed and called him most excellent excellency. Already these words attracted the man a bit, and he asked how about calling him graceful excellency. Of course, the girl was very much pissed off by this, and she shouted out that she was here trying hard to let him in and ask for a favor, so maybe he would show her some respect and listen to her request after all. The emperor inquired as to what it was she was saying, hadn't he listened to her before? The girl inquired in what sense, and he remarked that he had listened to her before. Plus, he had a sly smile. The heroine was confused because of this and realized that he was so calculating and also petty. But the interlocutor added, did she really think she knew how to flatter? Still, the fact that he is beautiful, graceful, and watch good is obvious and true. Sabina thought at that moment and how she would still like to knock him, but she knows what he might respond to that. Next, the man agreed and remarked that if her desire to go home was sincere, it might upset him. Next, he remarked that he would be blunt now and asked if she wanted to make a deal with him. The girl asked what kind of deal, and the interlocutor added that he thought, she already guessed, he was married before. Also to all this, it comes out that he had a thing for girls, and one passed away suddenly. The second one was run off by a lover, and she was never found. The third of his lovers suddenly decided to go into a convent. One of the wives was killed only because the previous emperor did not like her. Because of these words, the heroine was stunned and thought, did this man not only kill his own father, but also his wife? Lucrentius went on to say that it was all just for his own survival. After all, this woman was under the conditional empress dowager. In the end, he really had no other choice, as he was tried several times in his own bedroom. The heroine was indeed very surprised because of this, thinking whether all of them were really killed in a similar way if that was the case, but then it was no surprise that House Bonifit had sent her here instead of silly Elizabeth. This place really is a hell of a place. The Duke smiled magnanimously and called her his daughter, but in the end he sent her here instead of his own daughter. As a result, without any doubt, Duke Ale knew what was going on here. The Emperor inquired, so what would she do to whoever had harmed her? Would she pardon these people or execute them outright? Sabina remarked that she was not so magnanimous as to forgive those who had used her and then simply betrayed her. The man smiled rather sweetly and stated that it was about a huge relief as he was just as human. The girl thought that this marriage was made in heaven itself, this calculating man and also a petty woman. The interlocutor went on to say that in any case, the Empress Dowager would not keep quiet about this matter for sure so she would eventually try to impose her puppet at the quality of the empress to interfere in his affairs. He further stated that it was indeed terrible, but don't let her think that anything would happen to her. As of now, there are no nobles in this place, and all this means that the only one who holds all the power in this palace is her. The heroine realized that this man is really amazing, and so she asked if he was planning to use her as a shield against the empress dowager, and so the interlocutor smiled and replied briefly that he was. In despair, the heroine realized that she had been made again. All this chatter from the very same award meant absolutely nothing. The girl agreed anyway and asked that he tell her the details of the deal. He stated that she should protect him until he got rid of the Empress Dowager. It would also be quite splendid there to make her run after her. And so if she would fulfill all of his requests, then he would listen to any of her requests. The protagonist stated that they had an agreement, but she would trust him with this one. At that, she reflected that she would trust him one more time, and perhaps things would work out just fine. The emperor, smiling, remarked that this was indeed a good thing, and then added, By the way, Sabina is a made-up name. If so, then what is the real one? The girl took umbrage at this, and further stated that it is indeed her real name. Sa is a surname, but the first name is Bina. The interlocutor noticed that her full name is really quite short. Even still, the commoners themselves do not use only short names. The girl added that she thought it was so. She was also quite unique, but here it doesn't seem so outlandish. It was as if someone had really planned her fate down the line before. The man stated that perhaps that was really what it would be like if destiny really existed. And the heroine stated that she was just unlucky as she was still humiliated by the fact that she had been sold to this place. 
Lucrentia smiled and stated that right now, she did have a handsome husband like him after all. And if she did, it meant that her fate was stronger than any curse. The girl was embarrassed and thought that, of course, no doubt he thought so. After a time, a woman came to the protagonist and remarked that according to His Majesty's orders from this moment on, she would be at the disposal of Her Majesty the Queen and made a bow. She then introduced herself, noting that she was Countess Gust, senior maid of honor to the first queen, and asked to be called simply Samantha. Suddenly, Orlin, who was in the room, and apologized to Countess Gust. Still, she is actually the personal senior troll queen, and there is no need to bother a countess like her. The protagonist was surprised by this and thought she was empty-headed or just plain shameless. Still, it is unclear why she thought she would be needed here at all. After all, anyone who stayed at her side would be better, Orlin. So at that moment, she set the mug of tea on the table and slapped it down. After that, she pretended as if she was angry and noticed that this tea was bitter. The maid of honor inquired what she was saying and then stated to Her Excellency the Queen that she would take care of it a little later. This infuriated Sabina, and she wondered if she still didn't realize who she was to her now. She further asked how dare she even do such a thing, let her wipe here and make new tea now. It was not clear how she, being her maid of honor at all, could not know her taste, even though she had served her all the way from home. The woman wanted to remark something to Her Excellency. But the heroine interrupted her and asked if she heard what she said. That woman got angry about it and asked her to forgive her, but she didn't want to do all that. Then Samantha approached the queen and asked in a whisper if Mrs. Clowen had displeased her. The protagonist understood perfectly well that it was not because of all this, but because Orlin was spying on her. Therefore, the interlocutor stated that she had only been appointed by Duke Ale a few days ago. She then asked her interlocutor if she was correct in assuming that she came from His Excellency. Samantha smiled and remarked that she did. She had been looking after him since he was just a child. The heroine realized that she looks like she has been close to him for a long time. The man wants to use her as cover from the Empress Dowager, but he sent someone to help protect him as well. Or his plan is for her to rely on his trusted servant, and that is very dangerous. It turns out that this morning, someone has already poisoned the Emperor's cup as well as her cup. But it's the Empress. And what is it about the creepy honeymoon that makes her life so exciting? The Empress, of course, is frightening on the Emperor. Even more terrifying. So it's unclear whether the girl can trust him. What will happen in the event that he insidiously uses the situation in such a way as to get rid of her and the Empress? Though in any case, it was better to focus on the opponent in front of her for now. It was soon announced to the woman that the first queen, Sabine de Bonfi, was requesting an audience with the Empress Dowager. The heroine realized that she could not allow them to mock her. Samantha went to the woman and stated to Her Excellency, if she would allow it, she wanted to convey something. The interlocutor asked what it was, and the protagonist's maid of honor remarked that it was a welcome gift from the queen herself. The woman smiled because of that and thanked her and further stated that now she should sit back and wait for the heroine to fulfill her wish. Sabina said that this was Kamali tea, harvested last year. It was this very picking that was considered the best in the last hundred years. The girls nearby remarked that it was May, and was it not the rarest tea worth its weight in gold? Conveniently, the Empress felt cold towards her person and decided to draw attention to herself. She noticed that she was really impressed and asked what she should do. The protagonist saw that she looked as if she was not really pleased, but she can do nothing and it is impossible to retreat now, so remarked that she was very grateful to Her Excellency and had prepared the best for her. The interlocutor stated that then perhaps we should all enjoy the Queen's gift together. Afterward, she clapped her hands and several maids came over there with a tea set. The heroine along with her maid of honor turned their attention to them and saw that every single thing in the set was pure silver. The woman must be trying to impress her after all, to show the difference between their positions. The girl saw her rather sly look towards her, and thought that her actions now determined people's attitudes towards Sabina. So picked up a mug of tea and took a small sip from it. Everyone was surprised at how easily she did it, and people, the others even started muttering something. And the waterfowl vision smiled and remarked that as they could see, everything was fine. And this drink for Her Excellency is absolutely harmless.
Besides, she realized that she would repay the insult in the same coin towards her. Suddenly, the empress started laughing very hard and thus attracted the girl's attention. She remarked that she was happy to have such a devoted and wise daughter-in-law as she was. It appeared that she had indeed foreseen and dispelled her obsessive worry about it. This child is simply delightful. The heroine realized that, like you young, that interlocutor is not easy at all. And if the emperor himself is a bloodthirsty snake, then here is the empress is a beast. Then another girl approached her and noticed that she would look forward to meeting with Her Excellency. The protagonist took one look at her and didn't realize who she even was. That girl kept saying that she used to be a concubine, but now she is a queen, and as a result the city is full of rumors about her beauty. But this is what she is about to come out in front of and started laughing really hard. Sabina saw their contemptuous smiles and thought they were rather smug. Still, she admits she's not an outstanding beauty. Even so, perhaps she should strike first this time. Next, she smiled and asked Her Excellency if she was comfortable. After all, she should have asked that first, and is such a well-off person. The woman began stroking her belly and remarked that, thankfully, the baby was completely healthy. The heroine stated that she hoped the prince would be similar to the previous emperor. The empress's underlings remarked, of course so, he must be like him. Sabine looked at them in surprise and wondered if they really think he should be like the previous emperor. Recalling his smirk this morning made her feel sick. She went on to say that His Excellency as well as her were concerned that all of this had happened while the women were pregnant. But despite that, she had calmed down now. The Empress Dowager asked what she was talking about. And the girl added that now she looked so happy and had absolutely no shadow of worries. As soon as the heroine saw this, she felt relieved that she had worried all this time for nothing. Since she herself appeared to be fine, the baby must be healthy too. To make a long story short, it accused her of not looking like a grieving widow and wondered how she would respond to that. The girl was quite herself and thought that this tea was so sweet and it was as sweet as the taste of revenge. The Empress Dowager understood her plan and so she immediately started sobbing very hard on a sob. The girl looked at her in surprise and her interlocutor turned to His Excellency, the former emperor, and said that she had to go after him and it was not fair that he had left her alone. So she cried for a long time, and the ward came up to comfort her. The heroine thought that she was doing such a thing, because she did not expect such a reaction. Thought she would simply go into a rage at her mockery. The subordinate remarked to Her Excellency the Queen that Her Imperial Excellency had been sleep-deprived ever since, and they simply persuaded her with great difficulty to join them today, since she could be so cruel. Sabina was surprised at what was happening, and thought what was even going on, how did she manage to be the villain here? It turns out that that woman had gotten ahead of her and made her lunge in front of her. Right now, angry people were discussing her behavior. The girl realized that it was unfair after all, so she must strike back at them. So she approached the woman and, wiping away her tears, remarked to her dear that she didn't think she would take it so personally. She was simply worried that the grief would undermine Her Excellency's health. But the end of this worry was that her rash remark had wounded her. The heroine thought that if she continued in the same vein, she should definitely be given the prize for best actress. And so the empress smiled and remarked, dear, that ever since her body was no longer hers alone, she had become overly emotional and at times could not control her own feelings. The heroine was surprised and wondered so how far she planned to take their conversations. After all, this was a truly frightening woman for her. Her interlocutor thanked her and remarked that she was truly grateful to her. After that, she moved closer to her and they parted in different directions. In a whisper, the woman remarked to the girl that she was a cheeky child, and yet she could still fool around if she wanted to. In any case, it turns out that she did not stay long to mock, and the heroine in return thanked her. At the same time, of course, realized that this woman is the final boss, all alone, a self-satisfied empress, and behind her back she was wondering how dangerous her life would be here. Come to think of it, she had introduced her around her finger. After a while, the maid of honor noticed that the heroine was behaving with dignity, in a meeting with the empress dowager, and should not be worried. The heroine asked if it was true, and only one would think that in the end, she was just blown away. 
Samantha smiled and said that she was mature and wise enough for her age, so she would quickly adjust to the situation. But now she should tidy up and be ready for His Excellency. The heroine asked what she was talking about. What was it like to be ready for someone there? The woman smiled and remarked that His Majesty the Emperor would be visiting her tonight, so she should get ready. After all, after all, it was coming out that she was now the queen of this man. The girl was dumbfounded by such news and thought, should she really have to sleep in the same bed with this murderer? From all this, not only her life is at stake here, but her innocence is also in danger. If he does come to her, she won't be able to stop him. That said, the girl hasn't even dated anyone before, and she's pretty embarrassed because of it. In the end, the heroine just wanted the day to end without this man's visit. Simply, she wanted everyone to leave her alone and no one to touch her. At night, the dick was wondering when he would come, because she was already tired of sleeping in this position. While waiting for him for a long time, the heroine thought about it and remembered the stew with kimchi. She also remembered the pork, and it all looked just delicious. The girl at the same time did not realize the last time she had eaten stew along with kimchi. Even if it was only to be clear, she wanted to at least eat a piece for herself. Suddenly, she saw the emperor in front of her in her dream and asked how dare he steal her stew along with kimchi. He is simply some kind of rascal. Suddenly, she heard the interlocutor say that it was the right time for her to wake up, and so the heroine opened her eyes and realized that it was just a dream. But now she was drooling and wondering what it was. Suddenly, she noticed that her drool was flowing downward, and she was right above His Excellency. This caused her to become very embarrassed and stated that she was very sorry. The heroine was indeed ready to fall under the ground at that very moment. Completely incomprehensible to her was how she even found herself in such a position at night. The man stated that whether it meant that in the dream she was angry because he had stolen her stew along with the kimchi. He further asked if the meat with kimchi she had mentioned was that rare. Still, it turns out that she climbed on top of him and grabbed him by the throat and was about to bite him. The girl realized that he wouldn't forgive her if she told him that it was just ordinary home cooking. So she remarked that of course it was an expensive and rare dish. It is so rare that commoners can only afford it once every few years. The emperor stated that if she could eat such a rare dish, then she must be from a noble family. She thought that she might have to embellish her family's glorious past and remarked that she did. There used to be two royal families that were served by nobles and her mom sealing the royal family. The heroine knew that there were indeed nobles among her ancestors, and her mom carries the surname of the last royal family, so therefore she wasn't actually lying. The man remarked that unsurprisingly she was a fast learner and knew a lot. It all sounded very interesting, but he was too tired for all that now, so he would listen to the continuation another time. The girl was surprised and thought you wait a second, is he really going to sleep now? So in that very second she started to crawl back and realized that she had to get away from him in order for him not to do anything to her. Luckily, there was the fact that this bed was pretty big. The man looked at her in surprise at that moment and the heroine turned her head away and wished him a good night. After that, he got close to her and grabbed her waist and lifted her up. Afterward, wondering if he hadn't told her before that this kind of reaction only turned him on. After all, when she tries to get away from him, he is even more eager to catch her in the process. The girl thought it was really too close and she was very embarrassed, so she asked him to wait. She wanted him to keep his hands off her beautiful face and asked him to set a few rules. He inquired why this was so and the girl asked if he really wanted to sleep with her. At that very moment, she really was very confused. The interlocutor asked if there was a reason why he shouldn't. Sabina stated that it was because she didn't want to. Also, she didn't understand at all why she had to discuss something so embarrassing right now. The emperor stated that it was a bit of a shock to him, as she was the first woman to turn him down in all of his 27 years. The protagonist stated that it was all because they didn't love each other, but the interlocutor asked if it takes anyone for a man and a woman to sleep together. Well, the girl was dumbfounded from these words and realized that she knew he was absolutely amoral. At this, he touched her face and remarked that he desperately needed an heir. If it is convenient for the empress to give birth to a son, the situation could change dramatically. 
That was precisely the reason why he needed a son as quickly as possible. And so if she understood everything well, then it should be continued. So he closed his eyes and leaned into the girl, and she was confused, and wondered if he would really try to sleep with her now. At that moment, the girl closed her eyes, expecting him to kiss her, and did not understand what to do. But the man simply leaned down beside her and noticed that he was too sleepy today. Therefore, one should work on the air next time. The girl finally did open her eyes and wondered if he really just wanted to sleep. But if he wanted to do that right now, then let him just go to his room. She's not really comfortable sleeping with him, even though he's really warm. Still, if one does not look at the whole situation, then if one has to share a bed with him in the future, will he be able to protect us at all? After a while, the girl yelled for him to stay away from her. Didn't she tell him a couple days ago that she wasn't going to do any of that with him? And it's unclear why he's been trying to screw her over all this time. She remarked, doesn't he realize he's not convincing at all? The man was indignant and asked how he wasn't convincing. She remarked that it wasn't enough to make her fall in love. And then, before she could even finish speaking, the girl felt someone grab her arm. The emperor dragged her to the bed and, throwing her there, ended up on top of her. After that, he smiled and remarked that he would play along with her then. The heroine was very confused and asked what he meant, but the interlocutor stated that she would still be begging for him to take her, and so he gently touched her chin to his fingers and lifted it. But until then, he was not going to touch her with a finger. In her heart, the girl was very glad and thought that this was her victory. After all, indeed, she would be safe for a while. A month passed after these events, and the girl cursed at herself for the words she had said then. Every day, walking beside her in his home clothes, he constantly tried to embrace her. She didn't think that he would be so persistent in his attempts to seduce her. It seems that someone blabbed to him that he is simply charming in glasses. The heroine realized that she should ignore him, but he is so beautiful that she can't ignore him. He is so beautiful that he instantly forgets about the despicable Duke Ale that arrived at the palace for the coronation. Now, the emperor turned to the girl and remarked that Duke Ale would soon arrive and ask for an audience with her. At that moment, the heroine was stunned at his beautiful appearance, and after a moment only realized what he said. After that, she asked what he was saying, because she absolutely does not want to see this man. Simply, she wants to punch him in the face as hard as she meets him. And the emperor said that she can do whatever she wants, especially asked in what sense. The man stated that, as he had told me before, that whatever she did would not affect the politics of the empire. The upshot of all this is that the Duchy of Isle is not empire territory, and they are much lower in status than, say, the same earls and their honor is very much faded. The girl smiled and asked if she understood correctly that to make a long story short, he didn't care how their meeting would go. The interlocutor stated that it did, and she remarked that in that case she would need help. She was fiercely excited that she finally had her chance and she would get her revenge on that damn ducal family. She thought she still had to figure out how she could wash them down harder. The man noticed her joy and smiled as well. And so, shortly after the incident, the heroine headed to a meeting and was told there that the first queen had arrived for an audience. Grabbing the door, it swung open, the girl entered there in a dark, as if mourning dress. The men were quite wary and wore in a fright when she stepped inside, and the girl walked valiantly over to one of the chairs and sat down, and then leaned back and noticed that they could do so as well. The Duke sat down immediately afterward, and his wife gave him a strange look and remarked that they were grateful. The heroine realized that her commanding tone seemed to be causing them great confusion after all. The man's daughter lit up with joy at this and thanked Sabine for letting them do this, the heroine looked at her and thought that Elizabeth was still just as goofy. That said, it was incomprehensible how she could be so inconsiderate. The Duke wanted to call the heroine by her first name, but then realized that it shouldn't be done that way. So he called her Excellency and asked how she was doing. Sabina remarked that everything was fine, she was doing very well, and she was grateful. At this, she reflected that perhaps they all expected to see her as an unhappy concubine, but that was not the case. Also asked them to taste, tea is one of His Excellency's wedding gifts, yet such a rare and yet delicious and expensive tea they would not find at all in his duchy. They agreed, 
and the girl realized that it was rather petty, but she was so happy to watch them freak out. Elizabeth at this remarked that it was splendid, and the girl was very pretty. The heroine thanked the Duchess and thought she was a poor girl, because she didn't even realize it was a taunt. The girl noticed that it was not worth thanking, because she was delighted. She further remarked that in the future, she would be able to dress as beautifully and live in this palace as she did. Her parents were just dumbfounded and did not know how to choose words. And the heroine thought that the correlation actually carries. The girl at the same time kept asking whether she would dress like a queen, then the prince, that is, his excellency would like her or not. Now the heroine realized that it seems that this girl is really in love with the emperor. The little interlocutor went on to say that Sabina was now the first queen, but her father told her that the first queen appoints the princesses. Since the emperor chose her, it's the same as him choosing a home for the Ale family. And so, in the near future, she will also become a princess. The heroine smiled because of that, and thought that she couldn't even think of them expecting so much for themselves. The Duke, at the same time, joined the conversation, and noticed that the Emperor had chosen her to be the first queen even though she was the adopted daughter. He must have already been thinking about how to make Lisbeth a princess, since she is a noblewoman and has noble blood flowing in her. So he asked if His Excellency had said anything to her about it or not. Sabina realized that they were too scared to directly ask the Emperor about the princess's appointment, and so they still want her to beg the Emperor for it instead of them. The girl approached the heroine and tried to touch her, but the Empress struck her hand to prevent her from touching her. Elizabeth asked with surprise and with tears in her eyes what happened, and the heroine did not understand how she should deal with this insolent and greedy family. At that very moment, looking at her so-called little sister, she was furious about the whole situation. Suddenly, His Majesty the Emperor came over and touched her. At that very moment, he embraced the girl and called her dearly beloved. Therefore, she didn't understand if this person had truly lost his mind. It was unclear why she was saying such things, since they had not even agreed on it, although his appearance is quite convenient. But now was not even the time to think about all this. So she favored, bent, and accused her lover, noting that it was her dear majesty. The girl looked at her family with disdain and thought that it seems that he seems to be her truth very shocked, so this is quite spectacular for her. Suddenly she felt a man touch her neck and pull her to him. Before she realized what had happened, he kissed her passionately on the lips. Sabina was very amazed at what was happening and wondered what it was since she was so hot. Her hand began to tremble and the girl realized that his tongue was in her mouth. But here, with all of this, it turns out that they didn't agree on this. So perhaps one should push him away in this situation. 